This morning's scripture lesson will weave together passages that tell us something of the nature of God. It will be read responsibly between the men whom I will lead and the women <laughs> led by Brother Lord. Ready, guys? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago, I was set up at the first, before the beginning of the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, I was brought forth. And the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth when he had not yet made earth and field or the world's first bits of soil. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep. When he made firm the skies above. When he established the fountains of the deep. When he assigned to the sea its limits, so that the waters might not transgress his command. When he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him. Like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Please pray with me for a moment. Where we sit here, surrounded by your beautiful creation, listening for your voice and the sounds of the crickets that chirp and the bee birds that sing. Let us see you. We do long to know you, to come close to you. So let this time be that time for us when we imagine who you are and in knowing you better, come closer to you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock, our redeemer, our shepherd, our Lord, our savior, amen. We are supposed to imagine God, the one who created this world, this universe. Imagine God, the one who created us, and the, the minds we use to imagine. Isn't that being a little arrogant? Dare we even try? Well, it's tough to be in a relationship with anyone if we have no clue who they are, what they're about, what they're like. So we have to try to imagine who God is. It's not like we'd be making the image up out of thin air. We've been given plenty of clues, being intricately woven together 
good creation, this world that God has created, the marvel of each absolutely unique person, the love we have for one another, our sense of right and wrong, and above all, the love that God has shown to us in Jesus. This is no wishful thinking. It isn't like seeing pictures in, in clouds where one shaped vaguely like a dog won't teach us anything about dogs. But when we imagine we're seeing God through the vague clues found in creation in each other, we do learn about God. This morning's woven together scriptures all imagine in different ways God as creator. Genesis describes the spirit of God moving over an unformed world. Earth created simply by God's will. God speaks and it is so. But then Genesis describes a, a very human looking God, molding Adam with divine hands. Maybe like the God Michelangelo painted in the Sistine Chapel. Strong hands reaching down, faced with a gray beard. In John's Gospel, God works in partnership, does it with a word, with Jesus without whom not one thing came into being. In Proverbs, the partner is a feminine wisdom, a master working, assisting at creation. Our worship began with Moses, who just wants to know who God is, or at least have a name. God's answer, I am who I am makes clear that our efforts to name or imagine God will not control God's identity, cannot. God is, has been, always will be who God is, doing what God chooses to do. Our imaginings can't define God only give us tiny glimpses of a God beyond our comprehension, like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Each analogy reflects some small bit of the divine glory. Shepherd, Lord, Father, Mother, Judge, Redeemer. Each facet drawn from human life teaches us something about God, and the light that's reflected back teaches us what God would like us to be, what God expects from human shepherds, rulers, parents, judges. The biblical writers use literally hundreds of different images to describe God, each drawn from their own daily life and the world around them. Compared to their rich creativity, our God language is pretty poverty stricken. Sticking to Father and Lord is like trying to cram the God of the whole universe into a lunchbox. We need a much bigger lunchbox, a richer language. The Psalms provide plenty of choices, but also a model. We could draw from our daily life and the world around us. We could find new images for God. The all-seeing satellites, the plane riding the air, the ultimate wireless connector. How do you picture of God and your relationship with God. I want you to shift gears from listening to me 
to doing some imagining of your own. Let a, a guided meditation lead you into some creative dreaming. So get comfortable. Calm and quiet your soul. Close your eyes. Enter God's loving presence. God is in front of you, above you, behind you, all around you, wrapping you in love as snugly as if wrapped in a warm blanket. Feel God's love. Feel the awesome power of God pulsing like the heartbeat of the universe. Remember what God has told us. Be still and know that I am God. People call God by many different names. God, Jesus, Christ, Lord, Spirit, Creator. Choose your favorite name for God. Imagine speaking to God, calling out this name. Choose an image for God. The Bible uses both images from human experience, like liberator, judge, shepherd, comforter, father, mother, king, and images from nature, like rock, spring, fire, eagle, mother hen, lion, light, morning star. You can use those or images of your own. What is your image of God? I'm going to start some sentences. Finish them with whatever comes to your mind. When I think of God, I think of... Uh, if I were to draw a picture showing what God does, I would want to draw... The most important thing God ever did was Now with your eyes still closed Imagine that God is looking at you God is looking at your heart, your way of living Your weaknesses and your strengths What does God see? What does God see in your heart? What does God think about the way you're living? What weaknesses does God notice? What strengths does God wish you would use more? What does God see when looking at you? God calls you by your name. You've never heard your name spoken with so much love. God asks you, what do you want? Answer with whatever comes honestly from your heart, whether a single word such as peace, wisdom, love, forgiveness, or a phrase, a brief sentence such as, I want to know you, or I want to understand. What do you want? Ask yourself, if I could ask God for a gift that would help me live my life, what would it be? Imagine that God has given you that gift and you are holding it. What would you like to give God in return? What gift do you think God would like to receive from you? And 
Imagine yourself going out into the world, showing the world something about God by your actions. What are you doing? I'm going to give you a little bit of time to think about what you've imagined and what it may have revealed to you. 